I made a discovery yesterday and I couldn't stop myself from sharing it with you. Chances are most of you follow this channel for my Blender content, but this time it's about After Effects. Anyway, I strongly suggest you to follow. It might come handy to you too. This is something you could do with geometry nodes as well, so who knows, maybe I will record a follow-up video on that. As a motion designer, you have surely come across a project requiring you to do some kind of map animation. YouTube is full of map visualizations. The most tedious task on those projects is having to manually fill all the data on the map with countless layers of text. We have all been there, right? Well, those days may be over. I'll show you a new method to quickly type all the data you need on a single text layer and then precisely position each line on the map, tracking the points of a simple mask which you can draw on the same layer. The keywords here are all the data you need and a single layer. Imagine the time saved. And the beauty of it is that you can still stack all kinds of animators on top of it, just like any other regular After Effects text layer. You could practically fill entire maps with all kinds of data in a very efficient way. Did I mention that it works in 3D as well? It will involve the use of expressions, but don't let that discourage you. I'll try to explain it so everyone can understand what it's all about. Even if you don't, you can still follow this video and just copy the code you see on the screen. Start with a simple composition and add one text layer. Type all the data you need separated in lines. Now draw a mask on the same layer. I'll intentionally enter less points than there are lines so we can experience the problems that might arise and fix them accordingly. To make each line follow a mask point, add a new position animator rename it to Mask Tracker, delete the range selector and replace it with an expression selector instead. Have it based on lines. Before we continue, let's also change the anchor point grouping from character to lines. This parameter defines each line's pivot point for rotation or scale. This also makes sure that there is just one anchor point in the form of a little cross per line displayed in the COM view, instead of one per character. Leave the default values unchanged. Just less clutter on the screen. Let's continue. The position input values define the maximum limit a text element can move away from its initial state in each direction, x or y. I will drive these values with a simple expression, inside brackets, width, height. It covers twice the area of your composition, taking into account that the offset can be positive or negative in both x and y directions. But this way, no matter where we place the mask points, no matter the font size, the text will always display correctly on the screen. The expression selector defines the direction of the offset and the percentage of that offset. The expression entered here in this field is applied to each line separately. So, this code is already inside a loop and is executed as many times as there are text lines. There are three special variables specific only to the expression selector. Text index returns the index number of each text element, be it character, word or line in our case. It starts counting from one. Text total is the total number of lines. Selector value is the percentage or weight inherited from any previous selector in the same stack. You can have more than one selector stacked in any of the text animators, but that won't be relevant in our case. In the expression selector, we will read the position for every mask point based on the line index number, target the mask by typing mask1, this will target the first mask, no matter the name, dot mask path dot points. The mask is part of the same layer, so no need to bother typing this layer in front. 
This returns us an array of all the point position vectors. Let's store it to a variable called pt for points. Now let's normalize each position vector to a percentage of the maximum limit. After Effects offers the linear function to map one value from a given range to another, but the problem is that this function doesn't support vector values. So we have to separate each vector into its float components, remap those components and recombine the result into a new vector. Type x equals linear pt. From our vector array we need to extract the element whose index matches our index line. Inside a square bracket enter text index minus 1. Remember, arrays in JavaScript start counting from 0. Our line indices start from 1 instead, so we subtract 1 to select the correct array element. This is a vector, but we are only interested in the x value, its first element, so add 0 inside square brackets. Continue with the minimum and maximum limit value, negative width, width, and finish with the percentage range, negative 100, 100. Copy this whole line of code and paste it below. Let's modify it to work for the Y coordinate now. Replace X with Y. Enter 1 instead of 0 to select the second vector element. And switch the width variable to height. Let's recombine these percentage values into a vector. Inside square brackets X, Y. If we apply this expression now, we'll get an error. Cannot read properties of undefined, reading 0. What does this mean? In plain English, this means that there are not enough mask points for every text line to follow. So, the indices don't match. Remember when I said I'm intentionally drawing less mask points than lines? Let me show you how to fix this. We'll clamp the line indices to the maximum of mask points. Create a new variable called line. Line equals math.min inside parentheses text index minus 1 pt length minus 1. We are comparing the text index against the maximum length of the points array and returning the smaller value. Now there are enough point indices to match the line count. Replace each instance of the text index minus 1 in the following code with the new line variable. Hit enter. Have a look at the com view. The lines are kind of following the points, but they're not quite there. That is caused by the leading amount a special vector offset added on top of our transformation. Let's zero it out in the character panel. Now it's working. Observe carefully. The lines whose index is greater than the mask point count are stacked on top of the last point. You can easily add points to the mask interactively and position them where you need to. There's no problem even if you draw more mask points than text lines. Deleting any of the points will rearrange the text. That way you can easily make adjustments if you change your mind. Beautiful, right? But what happens if you delete all the points of the mask? You will surely get an error. Mask index out of range. That breaks the expression. You can very easily redraw the mask, but you would have to manually expand the layer properties find the expression field and disable and enable the expression again to make it work. Doable, but quite frankly it's a bit tedious. I'll show you how to automate this. We'll use a very basic JavaScript error handling technique. Try and catch are two statements we will use. Try checks for an error in the expression. Catch on the other hand runs an alternative code in case try does encounter an error. Cut this part of the code and paste it inside the curly braces of the try statement. If there is a mask present, 
there will be no error, so this code will run as usual. In the event that you delete the mask or haven't started drawing it yet, an error will pop up and then the code inside the catch statement will run. Inside the curly braces of the catch statement type x equals 0, y equals 0. In this case the amount to offset will be 0, so the text will stay in its rest position. This offset is applied as a simple text animator, which means you can freely stack other transformations on top of this. Add a new image layer containing a map, parent our text layer to it, and draw a mask point where you want them positioned. But you can also change and tweak your text as usual. Type your data, change font face, alignment, font size, fill color per character or per line. This also works in 3D. Turn the map in 3D, change your camera view. The illusion breaks, right? Wrong. All it takes to fix this is check the enable per character 3D option in the text layer animate menu. Now the letters follow the map in 3D. How do you rotate them up? Simple. You stack a rotate animator and set the X rotation to 90 degrees. Isn't this super? If you need other data visualized, you can duplicate your text layers, add the text and modify the mask to place them where you need. You could save this expression as a template and reuse it anytime in your visualization projects. I hope to have explained it well enough. I'm trying to keep my videos short so YouTube viewers don't lose interest. If you like it, please share the knowledge and help me grow this channel.